I'm the guy that, that wrote the book, Lyme Disease, The Untold Story. And uh, my buddy told me to throw a commercial in here, so uh, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my books and how to order them. I got some other books that don't deal with Lyme disease. But anyway, I wrote this book here for uh, for the doctors and uh, you know the government and uh, people who live in the woods that don't understand about this disease. But every time I went to a doctor, they wouldn't believe me that I knew what I was talking about, or they wouldn't believe me to give me any medicine. Because, uh, you know, the government always says that this disease ain't around, and, you know, the Centers for Disease Control, they don't understand it yet, neither. But, yeah, I know all about it, so I want to help, help you understand it, you know. You know, you saw my movie, or you going to see it and uh, this is my book I'll take a little bit out of my book mostly about the symptoms and uh, but if you want to order this book all my books you can order all my books for five dollars and you send it to uh, DAL PO Box 1 Patton Missouri 63662 Whatever book you want, just tell me and uh, I'll send you a book because I got them all. If you want my Lyme disease book, five bucks. It'll tell you all about the symptoms and about the doctors. I wrote this book called uh, How to Be Both a Friend and Lover to a Woman. Because every woman I've ever known told me that I do know how to be both a friend and lover to her. And she says the other guys don't know how to do this. So, yeah, I know the secret of that too. That's why I wrote the book. If I wrote this book for the guys, to help them to understand, you know. And uh, I don't tell you how to pick up women because you know, I ain't no good at that myself. It just tells you how to be their friend and stay their friend forever. You know? And uh, if you want to learn how to do that, it's in my book. It'll tell you how to do it. If you want to learn how to be a nice guy, it's in the book. It'll tell you how to do it. All you got to do is follow my instructions. I sell that book for five bucks, too. I wrote this book for the women. It's called How to Spot a Man Who Knows How to Love. And uh, women like this book. Because see, it was written, written by me. And every woman that I've known has told me that I'm special and one in a million. And uh, see, the women out there you haven't met very many special or you know, different kind of guys or one in a million guys. But when they read my book, you know, they understand more about, you know, a warm love that is different from other love. And but if you're a, if you're a woman and you want to know how to spot a man who knows how to love with a, a different kind of love that is a you know, warm, kind, caring love, not a, a jealous or abusive love. Hey, right here's the book. It'll tell you, tell you how to find a man that knows how to love. And it's also is written about me, because I know the story. I wrote this other book for uh, for cigarette smokers. It's called that smoldering cigarette. I sent this to uh, one of them Hollywood movie producers that uh, used to live in my hometown, named Edward Kovac. 
he read my books. He said they, you know, he liked them. And he, I autographed this book for him, sent it to him. He sent it back to me. So this is the only one I had, so I'm showing it to you right now. But right here's the Hollywood movie producer's name, and uh, he said he liked the book. But anyway, I wrote this book for. Uh, He's got my picture in it, a couple of them. And in here I talk about Lyme disease too because you know, I know so much about it. And uh, anyway, I wrote this for the people that's you know, always hanging around him smoldering cigarettes and always wanting to smoke cigarettes. And see, when, when old people read this book, they describe it as, uh, it's all true, which means they're old enough to understand that everything I'm saying in this book is all true. And then now, when the young people read it, they say, well, I'll quit smoking cigarettes whenever I want to. But, see, what they don't understand, what the old people do understand is, if they don't quit smoking cigarettes now, they might wind up smoking cigarettes the rest of their life on Earth. See? And, uh, you know, unless you want to smoke cigarettes the rest of your life on Earth, you ought to read my book. You know? That's why I wrote it, so you won't wind up doing that. You know? Because, you know, smoking cigarettes ain't no good for you. It's, you know, it's bad. It's, smoky and everything else. If you want that book, I'll send it to you for free if you order one of my other books. This is a story about me in the uh, Granite City Press Record from Granite City, Illinois. And uh, it was written by Mike Myers, a writer for the paper. And uh, it came out on October 1st, 1992, which wasn't too long ago. But it says, author says Lyme disease is rural plague, which means I'm serious, you know, because the guys at the papers even want to know about me, you know, because I know what's going on and them doctors don't know what's going on. So if you want a copy of this story, you can just write the press record in Granite City, Illinois, get October 1st paper, and it'll even tell you more about what I know about the plague the rural America. And this here's another paper that did a story about me. This ain't me, this is a guy with AIDS. But uh, this is the Riverfront Times from uh, St. Louis. This is a well-known paper. They put out like 360,000 copies a week. I got a good friend down there named Susan Snell. She introduced me to some guy uh, named William Stage. He's a writer down there. And, uh, he did this story about me. He writes in the Mississippi mud section of the paper. It's only a little story, but uh, it tells about a little bit of what I know about Lyme disease and about my the book I wrote. And uh, you want a copy of this paper? This was in uh, May 27th, of 1992. This paper did a story about me. So, you know, I know what I'm talking about. And, uh, you know, if you think you got, you've been bitten by the ticks and you think you got Lyme disease, more than likely you got it. And, uh, you know, if you got all these symptoms, it's there. 
know, this disease ain't, ain't gonna show up in a blood test. And blood tests are, uh, they ain't no good at all. See, the people that are, they don't know really nothing about this disease, you know. It's always been around, but they just started finding it. And uh, just in the recent years. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you what these ticks look like. I got a jar of them over here. And uh, in case you don't know what they look like, I'm gonna show you the stuff that causes all arthritis and Alzheimer's disease. It's just a little bitty, uh, I think it's an eight-legged insect, you know. But I got some of a couple different sizes here. And I'll show you what they look like. All different sizes. These are the little ones that ain't got no blood in them, and these are the big ones that, these are all full of blood. I got them off my dog. See the dog hair there. You can see that one right there. That's the one with a white dot. That's supposed to be the, the bad ones for you. But really, these things get, they get stuck on you. They're all bad for you. It ain't really just one certain uh, type of tick, you know. See, when they get like this, they're usually, you know, they're all different sizes. They're even so small you can't even see them. I see these little bitty ones. These little bitty ones right here. See, they get as big as these. They just suck the blood out. And what they're doing is, when they're sucking that blood out and they're stuck on you, for them to get this big, they got to throw back up inside you to shrink their belly down a little bit. And then they suck some more blood out and they uh, throw back up inside you. See, these ticks here threw up inside my dog a whole lot to get that big. I'd then give him medicine. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit later about how to tell if your dog's infected with this disease. But right here is the stuff that gives it to you. I'm going to tell you about some of the symptoms. See, in the early stage of this disease, your body tries to tell your brain that you have it with all the aches and pains in your body and sore muscles and the tenseness and sharp pains in your joints and your tendons and then in the late stage of the disease your brain your brain's trying to tell your body that you have it you know it, your brain starts separating from your body and it makes you forget stuff. You can't see if he was going to do a job, you turn around and forget what kind of job he was going to do. You always find yourself walking around, walking around the house, trying to figure out what you was going to do. Or if uh, I had trouble, I couldn't remember words to or to finish sentences. I'd be talking and just come up with a, uh, it'd be a cloud in my brain. I'd have a hard time getting around that cloud. Then on the way around that cloud, you forget what you were talking about in the first place. See, the person that's got this disease, they're kind of spacey inside. <clears throat> you know, I could, I can tell the people who've got it who haven't yet taken the medicine. I've had it so many times, you know, for people I meet, if they haven't taken any medicine yet and they've been exposed to this bacteria, I can tell just by how they use their brain. You know, I can tell when they run into that cloud or that blank in their brain or I can tell when they're in the jittery state and the spacey state. And, uh, the problem with this disease is, you know, there's, 
it's been around here for years and years. They said it migrated, but it didn't migrate. It's always been here ever since the field's been here and the trees have been here. And that's been past the pioneer days. And, uh, you know, really, I think the, the cases of Alzheimer's and arthritis that we got now was inbred way back in the 17 and 1800s in the pioneer days when the pioneers were exposed to this bacteria they kept breeding it into their family and uh, you know the bacteria was always there and then later on it turns into Alzheimer's and arthritis but I could bet you it was bred from the pioneer days when all the pioneers got bit by the ticks because that's just the way I see it I know it's always been here it didn't it didn't come from Connecticut and fly down here on birds or walk down here on animals or get carried get carried by pets it's always been here can't tell me no different because I'm I live out here in the woods and I lay on the ground. I know all about this disease. And the problem with the disease is trying to get the doctors to understand you or to understand that you have it. See the government says, oh this disease ain't around. It's way up in Connecticut. It ain't down here yet. But they're wrong. It's been down here. It's been here all the time. And all the time these people have been going to the doctor. And they've been getting misdiagnosed because the doctor don't understand this disease, you know, the way I do. Because I've had it all these times, eight, nine, ten different times. The doctor's never had it once. They just read it out of the book. So you're getting first-hand information right here. I know all the symptoms. Have you ever seen them old people cut them ticks up with their fingernails and squish them on their thumbs? You want to tell them not to do that because I did it. This disease just came on me just like that. So, uh, let me tell you, I want to read a little bit out of my book here about this what I wrote a few years back and uh, so in your early stage symptoms what's going to happen is you're going to feel it's going to be in a joint somewhere either a joint here or a joint here or a joint here or the joints up here or the joints in your knees or the joints in your ankles what's going to happen is going to feel a sharp pain maybe just one or two a day one sharp pain that only lasts a second that'll be real deep it's so deep in your joint and tendon you're going to say to yourself now where did that pain come from and, uh, that's the first thing i said to myself where did a pain that deep come from this is before I understood the disease. If any of you turkey hunters are out there, I can see my turkeys coming up. And uh, some wild turkeys coming up. They're getting ready to be walking in the picture. Anyway, then you get a your jaw right here gets real sore. It's real sore and stiff and you have a hard time chewing or eating food or opening your mouth. After I took the medicine, it was gone. And your muscles get real stiff and puffy and like you've been working them all the time. You always feel your heart beat right in here this far under your skin. It ain't this far. If it was this far, it'd be hard to feel. 
just a quarter inch under your skin. Get out of there. Bet you turkey hunters would like to just sit on the ground and call in turkeys like that, huh? Turkey. So I'm warning all the rural Americans and all the state and government officials that this disease is right here in southeast Missouri, it's in Tennessee, it's in Kentucky, it's in Alabama, it's in Montana, wherever the woods and the fields are, this disease is there. It's not in the middle of the city like the AIDS virus is way out here in the woods in the country where the pioneers came from. I know a lot of them guys in the suits and ties don't come out here in the woods, but they're going to have to send somebody from up there in the government offices to take care of this problem. And I can tell you about what needs to be done see all these people here in rural America, they just live out here with the trees and the sky and the ground. They don't care about nothing. All they complain about is aches and pains in their body. That's their only complaint. So I've talked to them, I haven't even asked them about aches and pains, and they just talk about aches and pains. And, uh, <clears throat> what needs to be done you know, there's no denying this disease is here. You know, there ain't no way you can convince me that this disease isn't here. I know it's here. I've had it so many times. I've been from doctor to doctor to doctor. The doctors don't understand. The doctors don't want to give you any medicine. And it's a misunderstood disease. Except I understand it. I'm trying to warn the people. Southeast Missouri. This is my dog, Wizard. And uh, I want to teach you something about ticks. Something that the doctors and the government officials and the state officials don't understand. But I understand about something called Lyme disease. And, uh, I had it six times. And uh, I know all the symptoms. and. I know it's a plague in rural America that the, the doctors and all the state and government people don't understand yet. But uh, I understand it. And uh, the doctors say it ain't here yet, but I know it's here. And I want to show you what these ticks look like. They're all over the dog and they get all over people and start sucking the blood out. And, uh, they get full of blood. And uh, they give you symptoms of uh, Alzheimer's and arthritis. That's just a regular. Uh, that's a dog tick there. There's a bigger one. That's what they look like when they're full of blood. They suck so much blood out, they... There's another one. See how big it is? That's all full of blood. These kind, they're full of eggs. You let them go. The ones, these big ones don't scare me, you know. Some people might be scared of these big ones. But the little ones the size of the pinhead are the ones you want to watch out for because they're the ones you can't see and they grow on you. They won't grow to get that big on you, but on the dogs they do. Yeah, this disease, I 
say, it gives you Alzheimer's disease and arthritis. It's a bacteria found in them chicks' stomach that uh, it gives you the disease. Makes you real nervous, too. And uh, I'm going to tell you some symptoms of this disease. Since I had it six times, I understand it. And, uh, you know, I know all the symptoms now. When I start feeling the symptoms, I go to the pharmacist. I got prescriptions of medicine, but I got the cheapest medicine they make. It only costs, costs 10 or 12 cents a pill. They got some more expensive stuff that costs 10, 10 and 12 dollars a pill. But I'm taking the cheapest form of the medicine because I ain't got no money. I'm just surviving out here in the woods. And uh, that's how a lot of these country people are. They're just surviving. They ain't got no money. They ain't got no insurance. They're just trying to live. And they don't really understand what's going on. But I understand these symptoms now. I had them for half my life, for about 15, 16, 17 years. And I knew I wasn't normal, but I didn't really know what was wrong with me, but I knew the other people what didn't have the same problems I had, you know. Cause I used to, I used to think of something to do, and then as soon as I'd turn around or walk in the other room, I forget what I wanted to do or where I wanted to go or you know just what I was going to do. And then sometimes I'd turn around and I'd either pop into reality or get lost. I didn't, you know, I knew something was wrong, but as long as I'm alive, you know, I'm surviving and you know it didn't didn't seem too bad because I'm still living. But now that I've taken the medicine, I don't want to, uh, you know, I don't want to have them symptoms. I just take the medicine. You know, I've been so far into the late stage, a lot of times it always, it always comes back. As soon as I get bit by a few ticks that stay on me for, you know, 10, 20 hours, all my symptoms just start coming back. And, uh, you know, it kind of reoccurs stuff. Come back in the middle of the winter when there wasn't no ticks around to be bit by, and I just stopped taking the medicine for a month and a half. And all my symptoms started coming back in the middle of December or January. And I know I didn't get bit by the ticks, so that's how I know it comes back, reoccurs. See, when you got all these, uh, you get all these pains, you get them down here in, in your knees, even, and in your ankles. And, uh, you always get, got it in your neck here. You always get this, uh, your neck always hurts. And you get this, like, a fuzzy feeling around, and you always got pain in your neck. And, uh, your muscles are real tired. See, didn't no matter what I did, five minutes after I started doing some kind of work or job, my muscles was real tired like I've been working for hours and hours. And uh, it only worked five minutes. Didn't have no energy left in my muscles. They were just real uh, worn out, tired. And, uh, Had to had to constantly eat food to get some energy. Then after I started taking this medicine, I could go a day and a half, two days without eating no food, and had all kinds of energy. And the medicine's only an antibiotic. It's a you know ain't no kind of upper or downer or painkiller. It's just an antibiotic, and that's one of the ways you know you got it. You ain't got no energy and you take this antibiotic and you get all kinds of energy, that means you got the disease.
You know, you just have a hard time finishing a job. They, you know, you do do one job and then you just just start it and you want to do another job because that job seems kind of too hard to do and they're really just real easy jobs no matter what it is. You just can't finish one job at a time. You got to go from job to job to job, you know, little jobs. And you always have trouble. You can't finish one because they all see either seem too hard or it seems like you can't do it and you want to do something easier. You just can't get them done. It's kind of hard to explain, but anybody that has Lyme disease knows what I'm talking about. You kind of you want to move back and forth and you're always moving around and you can't sit still to finish a job. It's just jittery and nervous. It's in bacteria in there messing with your nerves. Another thing you get is head rushes. I had head rushes for years and years. Yeah, I got oh, kind of a bad spine. I mean, I got a little spine trouble. I always blamed it on my spine. But I took this medicine, never had head rushes anymore until I stopped taking the medicine. And then, or when I'd get refit again, I started getting head rushes. Head rushes, I knew it was time to take the medicine. And a head rush is like, oh, when you're sitting down and you stand up, you feel this warm blood going to your head. It's just a rush of blood. And it feels like you're swaying around and you're going to faint like almost. And then uh, you get these body rushes. And your body is something along with the jittery state to where your body just, your body feels like a, a rush that's creeping up and creeping up and creeping up, you know, closer and closer and then it lets go. And then it just starts all over again. It just creeps up, creeps up, and lets go. Like the muscles in your body are doing that. And then uh you know when you got these pains with the arthritic symptoms, you got these pains in your joints and tendons, you know. It don't matter if it's your elbow or your, your shoulder or your knee or your ankle. You know, when you move them just a little bit, you feel it. You don't feel it. You hear this cracking and popping. It's like a dry joint or something. It's always got a, a cracking or popping in there. And, uh, you know, that's, that's how you notice you get, that's how you know you got the disease. But when you take the medicine, it goes away. I see, I don't have that trouble anymore because before I get to that state, I go to the pharmacist and get me some more medicine. And start taking the medicine, it goes away. You know, you have a hard time. You know, when you're in the late stage Lyme disease, you have a hard time using your fingers. They don't all work right. And uh, it's like, you know, before I couldn't, uh, I couldn't move one finger at a time. You know, it's, it's with a coordination too. I still have a hard time doing it, but if I try to move one finger, it'd all move because of the arthritis. It's so stiff and your brain, your brain's clouded and your body don't work with your brain. There's a separation there. And, uh, you just hands just don't work right. I couldn't pick up pieces of paper, you know, just a little thin piece of paper. Cause my, I was just real shaky and jittery inside. And I couldn't feel how much pressure I was applying to, you know, small stuff. I could pick up five pound stuff, but anything that weighed, you know, an ounce or or less or more, couldn't tell how much pressure I was using on my fingers and stuff would just fall out of my hand, you know, and I'd say, I knew something was wrong with me then, because I, you know, you ain't supposed to drop stuff at 30 years old and five, six times a day stuff just falls out of your hand. There's something wrong there. Yeah. I used to wake up at night 
you know, from sleeping. I wake up in the middle of the night and look around, didn't know where I was at. I mean, I couldn't remember, you know, where I went to sleep at. You know, even, you know, in my own house, I knew, you know, I moved around a little bit, but I didn't move around that much. You know, I got a few pieces of property. And, uh, but that was one thing that I did. I'd wake up in the middle of the night, I'd look around, and nothing looked familiar. It didn't matter where I was. And uh, I couldn't even remember where I went to bed at. And, uh, you know, I wasn't on no drugs or nothing like that. I just couldn't use my brain to think. And uh, when I had it and when I lived in the city, I'd, uh, You know, I'd go someplace, I'd go to the store and turn around and say, you know, what am I doing here? Or, I was like, lots of times I was just a half mile or a mile from my house and uh, I'd be lost. Another thing about it is it makes you stutter. There you know any old people or young people that stutter and forget. That means they could have this disease because I like stuttered for like half of my life. I took this medicine and I didn't stutter anymore. That's one of the symptoms of this disease. But that's more so in the late stage. You know, you get stuck on words like d d d d or uh, uh, it's just a stutter there. I think it goes with that shakiness that's inside your body and plus the cloud in your brain. Now I'm gonna go over and uh, I'm gonna go over and interview a couple people. Some of them, you know, I tested positive and. You know, they got the disease and they've taken all kinds of medicines to try to make them feel better. You know, they'll tell you, I get them to tell you some symptoms they had. And then I'm gonna introduce you to some people that never have been to the doctor that I know has got the disease because I can see the symptoms in them. Your name is Terry? Yeah. 27 years old? Yeah. And you were diagnosed with having Lyme disease? Yeah. During, uh, how much medicine do you think you've used so far to treat this disease? Well, I've used a lot of it. Uh, the IV medicine was the most expensive. And that was probably around, I'd say, you know, $45,000 for all that. I've taken a lot of these, uh, just oil antibiotics and some of those pills, four or five dollars a piece, some of them seven and a half a piece. Good yeah. Uh, how long do you think you've had it? Well, I think I had it, you know, long before I went to the doctor. I'd say I probably had it for at least, uh, at least a year before I went to see the doctor. So I probably had it for a couple of, couple of years at least. Well, at first it all, it all started off, like some days you'd kind of feel nervous or be tired, you know, and, and, uh, and then it got worse. My stomach got to bothering me, and, and uh, sometimes whenever I was working, I'd feel kind of dizzy or like it. Sometimes I felt like I was gonna pass out. And, like a head rush? Yeah. And then sometimes, like in the morning, whenever I'd go to work, it, uh, I'd always go to work, and then whenever I'd get to work, I'd I'd have to eat something, and, and uh, sometimes whenever I'd eat something, it kind of you know help a little bit. Did your energy flow back a little bit? Well, a little bit, you know, it, it helped some. I don't know what it did, but but uh, have you noticed since you started taking the medicine that? You know, it kind of blocked your energy flow and you got more energy? Well, I got a lot more energy than I had. 
since I've been on antibiotics. Uh, I'm able to work, and, and I guess that's the main thing, you know, with being able to work. Yeah. What about chicken inside? Yeah, I, yeah, I had that. It's it's kind of how it all started out. Was was uh, it felt like my nerves was bothering me, you know, and and uh, just felt like your whole insides you just nervous and and uh, like whenever I was at work, like people would come in and, and sometimes I just you know didn't want to talk to them because I just my nervous system seemed like it was all screwed up. You'd be, You'd be uh, all jerry inside, and, and you just didn't know what to do. And uh, real kind of jittery, spacey feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, has, has that bacteria in there short circuiting your nerves, like it runs into your nerves, and it kind of short circuits it, and you're all. You can tell. You can tell that there was something taking over your body, like almost. Yeah. yeah. But you just couldn't. You couldn't figure out what was wrong. You know. It took a while for the doctors to yeah, figure took, out what was wrong. It took uh, five months. Maybe I had sugar diabetes, and so he checked me for that. And then uh, I waited a couple of weeks and, and went back to him. He said he didn't have sugar diabetes. And, and then uh, I told him about my stomach. It's always kind of quivery like, you know. And he asked me if I eat breakfast, and I told him no. And he said, well, I'll try eating breakfast, you know. And, see if that helps. So I tried that for a month and then uh, I went back to him and I told him I just felt tired all the time and, and my stomach was bothering me some and, and uh, I just told him I didn't, you know, didn't have no get up and go like I had before because before I'd work 15, 16 hours a day and, and I'd sleep, you know, maybe five or six hours and get up and I'd feel fine, you know. And, uh, so then he said, well, let's do a chem screening. That's where they check the 15 or 20 things in your blood, you know. So it took about probably a week or so for that to come back. And he called me and talked to that guy fine, you know, with my blood count and, and the cholesterol and all that stuff. And he said, uh, he asked me, he said, well, do you think he's depressed? And she said, well. And he said, well, he said, I think that's what it is. He said, uh, let's try some uh, depression. So I tried that for uh, three weeks, and I got where I just, I didn't know anything, and and uh, it just seemed like when I was on that medicine, my eyes was playing tricks with me, you know, like he was looking at something, but he didn't really know if he was seeing what you was seeing or not. The best antibiotic that, that helped me was uh, was clafrin, and that was, that was through the IV. Most expensive stuff, or pretty expensive? Yeah, it's it's more expensive uh, with the IV in your arm, but but uh, one thing about the IV, it, it gets in your system, you know, a lot quicker than oral medicine. Pretty potent stuff. Yeah. Well, I, I was taking uh, two grams of clafrin every eight hours, and I think the recommended dose is uh, two grams a day. Well, okay, I want you to I want you to watch this guy. Watch the way he walks. Watch his shoulders. And uh, watch his hands. That's all the arthritis. This guy's been bitten over been 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 bitten over two thousand times by the ticks. And uh you can see it in his hands and his arms. All the uh, inflamed arthritis. And uh, you see it there in his hands. Well, uh, I'm here with uh, a guy who I know has got Lyme disease because. I can see all my old symptoms in him. I know exactly what's happening inside his body. And right here is 
this guy ain't never been to a doctor. This guy has been bitten over 2,000 times by the ticks. And, uh, how old are you? 23. 23? 23 year old man, young man with all he's got is arthritis and the symptoms of Lyme disease. Remember, he's been 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 bitten over 2,000 times. A lot of these country people have been 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 bitten over 2,000 times. Hear that little bit of stutter in there? I ain't took no medicine in about three weeks. And stuttering is a very important symptom of this disease because I know when it's coming back and when it's coming back is when I start stuttering like that. I know it's time to take some more medicine. So if I'm having trouble with these doctors, I ain't got no money and uh, they don't want to see me. I even tried to get the government to help me. They don't want to help me. But that's a different story. I'm showing you the real thing right here. This guy's got Lyme disease. His whole body's contaminated with Lyme disease. The, uh, I've been telling him for a while that he's got it. He ain't got no money to go to the doctor. He ain't got no insurance to go to the doctor. And, uh, I want to show you the, the symptoms. I had these symptoms. These symptoms come back when I, weeks after I stopped taking medicine. And I'm going to show you these symptoms in him. He's got them. Uh, we're gonna, we're, I'm gonna show, the, show the people, do for, uh, you tell me, uh, you got, uh, you got pain in your body? Yeah. And, like, tired muscles and tense muscles and pain? Yeah. Yeah, especially my elbows and my joints. Right here. Right here. 